Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're going to show you the basics of flaring and swaging copper tubing. Now, while there are more complicated methods for doing this procedure, we are going to show you the most basic way and the way that you are most likely to encounter as an HVAC apprentice. We hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so we're first going to do a quick run through of the tools that you need to do your flare and swaging. Um, what we have here is the standard flaring and swaging kit. This is the very basic one, um, sort of entry level stuff that we're using locally um, here in South Africa in Cape Town. Um, it's the one they train you with at the colleges. It's the one you are more likely to see as you start off as an apprentice um, on one of the vans at your company. So I'm going to do a quick run through. We've got basically the flaring blocks over here. Those are for all the various sizes of piping. If you actually look at the block itself, they've very nicely sort of marked on the block the various sizes of pipe and in the opening so you know exactly which pipe. You don't have to guess or go on any type of experience. The number, the size of the, of the pipe is written right over the top of the holes on the flaring block. Um, so you, you know exactly which pipe you need to put into which opening. Funny enough, as I started out in the industry and I wasn't quite experienced enough to be able to tell the, the pipe sizes just by looking at them, I actually used to take the uh, piece of the pipe and put it into this flaring block to see exactly what size that pipe was. So this was my little cheat sheet, if you like for um, figuring out pipe sizes. So smaller pipe sizes on this one. And then sort of your bigger pipe sizes over here, you've got your three quarter half inch and that's five eighths. Over here you have your actual flaring and swaging tool. This is the actual tool that clips onto the block. And then this point here um, is what you're going to use to actually do the flare. Then over here we have the different sizes of fittings. These all fit on here. So this screws off. And then you screw whatever particular size You want these basically just screw on they are interchangeable and that's why this tool actually fits all the sizes sort of a universal tool um, as I said before they are more complicated and more complicated and more advanced um, methods out there at the moment you know as industry and as technology improves we're always looking to find sort of better ways and easier ways to do these things and for that reason there's always sort of new methods coming up and new ways to do things and then those we are actually going to discuss in a later video um, where we will actually compare the different methods and see which ones we like and which ones we prefer um, but for now we're just going to do the very basic stuff with a very basic flaring kit okay First thing we obviously have to do, and I have to run you through this, we've got over here, we've chosen specifically, we've got a piece of pipe, this is 3 h pipe, like I said to you earlier on, I'll show you quickly how I used to figure out what size the pipe was, I actually used to take this flaring block, and I used to literally put the pipe inside. And that's how I used to tell what size the pipe was. So this is 3H pipe. So what we're going to do is, we're going to demonstrate a flare and as well as a swage. So for those of you that don't know, a flare is basically what you would do in order to allow the pipe to fit inside a flare nut. We're actually going to show you that later on. And then a swage would be the opening that you make where one Piece of pipe can fit in another. Let us show you both of those things quickly. But the first thing we're going to have to show you how to do is how to actually physically cut this pipe. 
So for those that have been in the industry long enough, you'll know that there are two basic pipe cutters. This is the more standard bigger pipe cutter for your bigger diameter or larger diameter pipes. And then we have what was commonly referred to as the imp. A lot of people simply refer to this pipe cutter as the imp. And a lot of the guys that haven't been around too long um, thought that the word imp referred to something regarding its size. But in actual, fact, in actual fact, some of the earlier producers and manufacturers of this pipe cutter, um, Imperial was actually the, the name on the pipe cutter and Imp is actually short for Imperial. So a lot of the older guys in the industry will know that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut a piece of pipe. Basically open that up, slide that inside. You'll see the two little wheels on the inside. The pipe fits nicely in there. And then you've got a blade. Let me just see if I can get this in focus. There we go. And then you've got a blade right over there, which actually cuts the pipe. So first thing you do, now the mistake that a lot of people make is, first thing you have to do is sort of tighten this to get the, the pipe cutter to just grip onto the pipe. A lot of people over tighten this and that's a bad thing because it creates sort of indentation where the cut happens and also in addition to that it creates a horrible burr you can see horrible burr inside the pipe um, when you sort of over tighten this the burr is always going to be there you just obviously don't want it to be too bad so what we'll do we just give it a slight turn not too much and you just twist it. You will feel it gets easier and easier as the as the blade actually cuts its way through the pipe. Let me tighten it again. The important thing is to tighten it very slightly at the time. Go very slowly about this. You don't want to over tighten it because you're in a rush. Just go very slowly. Take your time about this. Otherwise, like I say, you create a a pretty severe burr inside the, the pipe. So you just keep cutting, keep cutting. I tend to put my thumb in this position. Of course, for the sake of this demonstration, you don't want the pipe to just drop off and fall. So I'm just going to keep my hand in that position. Stop the pipe from falling. And there you go. So as you go right through, this is what we're referring to as the burr. If you look inside there, it's not too bad. Where the, where the pipe actually makes a little sharp edge. It's not too bad because we've obviously taken our time about that. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do the exact same procedure, but with the bigger pipe cutters. So same mechanics involved. We've got the two little rollers and then the blade over there. You just fit the pipe onto the rollers, shut this down, just close it very slightly minute it takes that's fine and then there you go exact same thing except exact same burning okay so now that we have a decent piece of pipe, the first thing we have to do is, before we can go ahead with a flare, we actually need to deburr this pipe, which means to just take that sharp edge off that's inside there. Now, very important practice to, to mention is that you never, wherever you can, do not deburr it with a pipe pointing upwards, because anything that comes off there, anything that, any little edge you're taking off, it's just going to drop inside the pipe and it's going to go inside your system. So as best as you can, when you're deburring, you really want to, if you can help it, sort of deburr with a pipe pointing downwards, so that as you cut, all filings will fall down. So, just a simple process of getting that lip nice and clean. And 
also what you want to do is you want to kind of make sure that this edge is straight. So on the back of these pipe cutters you'll see just on the back of the blade there's a little file which you can then use just to straighten the edge. You do want that edge to be nice and straight. And then any sort of metal filings to be off there. There you go. Now she's ready to be flared. Okay, so as mentioned before, we have two different sizes of flaring blocks. Because we are dealing with a 3 8 pipe, we're going to use the flaring block with a 3 8 hole on it. So it's going to be the small one. And we just got to check which side. Yeah, this is the side that was deburred. So what we do is we slide it into the flaring block. And very important is the depth at which. Let me just show you this. Get in view. Move that for you. Very important is the actual depth of the pipe as it sticks out here. If you take it too far, it's going to be a bad flea. If you're going to take it too shallow, it's going to be a bad flea. So a good practice, if you look at the inside of this block, you'll see this little ridge over here. And good practice is to have the, the length of this ridge here, between there and there. That's got to be exactly how much it sticks out. So let's just double check that we've got the D-bird side. Yep, we do. So what you want to do is, you want to sort of estimate that the amount sticking out there is sort of more or less the same as the length of that ridge. Which if I look at that, it seems about, oops, just move that. That seems about right. Let's get this flaring block on. Let's see if we can do a good flare. What a lot of people have done in the past is they've used this flaring tool to sort of tighten this and that. And what inevitably happens is they break that off. So you're better off just hand tightening it really well. This fits right on top that way, but you need to just open it up enough so that this little lip actually sits over here. So let's quickly do that. Nearly there. Just got to go a little bit more. And there you have it. This is where you should be at. That's obviously going to grip this in place so that it can put pressure down. Okay. Then all you do is rotate and tighten as far as far as she'll go. And then you loosen it. Now you may have heard a sound, a little squeaky sound. That's actually coming from over here, which means we need to oil it just a little bit. What we have done is, and what is good practice, is to just put a little bit of oil on here before you start the flare, because that just makes it a lot easier for the contact point for that friction. Okay, so let's have a look. If you look at that, it's a very good flare. The way you can usually tell is that the edge of the copper sits right on the edge of the ridge, which is exactly what's happened. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you exactly where this flare is meant to be used and another way that I actually just check to see that it, it's actually a good flare. Is what we do is we take a flare nut, here's this boy here, and this is obviously meant to fit inside here. So if you check, the 
that's a pretty good flare. So when this fits onto your expansion valve or any other um, flare fitting, she's going to sit there's a nice clean movement. And if you look on the inside and you sort of hold her down, you can see she goes around all around to all the edges. So that's a pretty good flare. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to swage piping. The swage is meant for when you're going to have a joint where you want to join two pieces of pipe. Obviously, this is the same size, so it's going to be very difficult to do a weld there. So we need to find a way to fit the one pipe inside the other pipe. And that's where the swage comes in. So the first thing we're going to do again, as we did before we deburr, Get the 3 h flaring block. Now this time, in order for the one pipe to put snug into the other, you need to obviously have the depth to be deep enough for the one to fit in the other. And a good practice is that the depth over here should be equal to the diameter over there. So again, you can sort of look at it and sort of eyeball it. Yeah, it's about there. If my eyes are good enough. We're about to find out. Again, don't use this flaring kit to to tighten these. You will break them off. I guarantee you. So obviously, that flaring tool is not going to work for us to do the swage. So you'll swap that out for this bad boy over here. You'll notice this is the smaller one and they're sort of different sizes. So it works with all the sort of smaller size pipes, quarter inch, even smaller than that sometimes. Um, all the rest of these are sort of for larger diameter piping to do all the swage work. Okay, again, let's fill it nice and neatly. I'll show you again, we're just out of view. Again, it's just a matter of tightening. You have it, we loosen that out, get it all the way out. And just to demonstrate that it is a decent swage, I've got the one pipe and she fits neatly into the other which means you are now going to be able to do your copper to copper phrase right there. And that's it, that's simple. Anyway guys, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.